Hi guys, this is JasonO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the Motorola Edge 30 Pro, the first flagship from Moto after a while. Now, the device, you probably know it under the name Moto X30 in some other parts of the world, but this is the global, or better said European version, in a gorgeous green hue. It's greenish, it's bluish and inaugurates a new camera module design. Now, the price at the moment I'm filming isn't exactly known, should be revealed pretty soon. Some sources talk about 500 euros, but that's too good to be true. Anyway, it's our very first contact with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU, the follow-up to the Snapdragon 888. First impression, a very rounded phone, also very slippery. Uh, the roundness, the curvature of the back continues on the side going all the way to the flat facade. Another weird thing, the buttons are placed very high, so you'll be tempted to press here somewhere, they're actually here for the power and here for the volume. The interface has changed, the interface has changed, you can see that much, even from the start password input. You can also tell that from this area here, so Motorola seems to be doing its own thing with a slight Google vibe to it. Okay, it's an unboxing, so let's see what's inside the box of the Motorola Edge 30 Pro. First things first, we have an envelope, which holds a very useful case. And when I say very useful, I am referring to the fact that the phone is very slippery and may require a boost in grip. And that's the boost you're getting here. The trademark uh, oval shaped camera area. The key used to access the dual nano SIM card slots. We don't have micro SD. And also the important uh, guide and juridic info regarding the device. That's pretty much it as far as the envelope is concerned. Uh, I'm actually wondering if they make other color cases or if they provide some. Um, but I think that a transparent one would be fine because you really want to see the beautiful backside. And aside from the green hue, there's also a white version of the phone. You can see it again here. This is obviously glass, it's matte glass, doesn't draw fingerprints, which is nice, and the camera doesn't protrude. We don't have telephoto, that's probably why. Okay, also inside the box, there's an USB-C to USB-C cable, which tells me that the charger has an USB-C connector, which is right here. Um, this one is an odd duck. It's not an 89 watt charger. It's a 68 watt charger, which is still pretty good for nowadays um, and pretty good for Motorola. I'm thinking it's the record so far. We're done with the inside of the box. Right now I'm using face unlock, which is being signaled by the green icon here, which tells me that the camera has been used. Now, uh, as far as the design is concerned, we have curved glass at the back side, which extends the front side. Uh, and here we have glass as well, with Gorilla Glass Protection. Not very sure of the material of the frame, my guess is metal, should be metal for sure. And I have a slight HTC vibe from this device back in the day when HTC made some pretty good phones. We have IP52 certification and this hue is called Cosmos Blue, that is also white as I said before. 8.79 millimeters in thickness, although the curvature makes it seem uh, bigger and 196 grams, which is actually not bad seeing how some phones out there even go up to 240 grams or something crazy like it. Now the screen I'm playing with here, uh, this one is a 6.7 inch P OLED, which is plastic OLED panel, Full HD+, plus, 144Hz, Motorola seems particularly keen on this refresh rate, and HDR10+, plus supported by the panel as well. The 144Hz are activated from the factory and they're available here, and you can see here the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 CPU, it's made by Samsung based on a 4 nanometer process, soon to be moved towards TSMC. Now, aside from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, we have 12 gigs of RAM, LPDDR5, and 256 gigabytes of storage, and once again, no micro SD. The battery is a uh, 4800 mAh unit, and we have good news. Aside from the 68 watt wired charging, we also have wireless charging via this backside, 15 watt wireless charging and even, even reverse charging 5 watts. It's small but it's still better than nothing if you want to quickly juice up a pair of headphones for example. Now other thing we're mentioning, I'm going to go again to this beautiful area here. 
Uh, I find it to be pretty minimalistic. It's somehow very Google-like. It feels inspired by a smart home device, a Google Nest or something like it. It's like the control panel of a smart home. So, connectivity-wise, we have 5G available on this device. We also have Wi-Fi 6E as a flagship should. And the USB-C 3.1, which outputs a video signal, uh, is compatible with DisplayPort 1.4. We have dual nano SIM card slots. We have NFC for your payment needs. And also... Um, GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Bluetooth 5.2 as well as, uh, well, I think that's pretty much it connectivity wise. Quick glance around the phone and we find the top side with the microphone. We find the bottom side with the speaker, microphone, USB-C port and the SIM tray. And you should know that we have a stereo experience here. And there's also some Dolby Atmos involved. If we dig a little in the sound and vibration, uh, you can actually see that we also have Crystal Talk and Dolby Atmos with a few profiles. Now, uh, I should also mention that we have stylus support on this screen and it's time to discuss the cameras on a wider background. This is an incredibly high resolution front camera, 60 megapixels, they're really going overkill with this one, f2.2 aperture and obviously it combines 4 pixels in one with quad pixel technology. Uh, but you can also take 60 megapixel selfies if you want to. The back side tells a particularly interesting story. A story which I've seen applied by OnePlus and Oppo over the past year. There are two 50 megapixel cameras here. The main one with optical stabilization and omnidirectional focus and the ultra wide one. Both are 50 megapixel shooters. And this one has 114 degrees, the ultra wide one, and also does your macro duties. Once again, as I've seen the uh, Oppo and OnePlus phones doing last year. And this small fellow here is a two megapixel bokeh shooter. This ensemble also offers uh, 2 megapixel, excuse me, 2 micron pixels, there's a dual LED flash here and you can do 8K videos in, two, in 24 frames per second. But I'm actually more impressed by a feature which I think Apple made cool, the HDR 10 plus video recording. Now, the interface hasn't changed from the usual Motorola affair. We got some options here like active photos and uh, aspect. And once again, the resolution is changed from here. You can go to up to 8K, as you can see. You also have a night vision handy, which is basically night mode, and the usual extra features that only Motorola offers, like spot color, cutout, their cinemagraph, there's also dual capture and uh, several other features. And if you really go deeper into the settings, you'll notice that we have AI settings, and there's quite a few of them, plus these extra photo options. You can see that you're getting uh, 15 megapixel shots with a 60 megapixel camera by combining pixels. Here you can also have efficient videos and extra stabilization and HDR10 can also be applied. Okay, I think we're pretty much done with the camera. There's a lot to unpack and dig into once the review will be done. This is obviously Android 12, a beautiful implementation of Android 12, something that feels straight out of the Google lab. So Android 12 with the usual customization with the MyUX, this time cleaner, sharper, prettier. Here you can do some changes to the layout, fonts, colors, icon shapes, sounds, display size, font size and system theme. And here you have your themes. I'm actually loving this new interface. I hope to see it more and more on Motorola phones. It's very promising. Here we have the gestures. I'm actually using gestures for navigation right now. Tips and tricks, display features, big display and native display. And for gamers, we have the Dolby area and the game time which with its features will uh, which which will remove distraction block calls and also maybe enhance the performance a bit and allow for some video capture i should also probably mention that the fingerprint scanner is placed on the side in the power button and if you want to get extra intel on the whole ready for thing which is for productivity basically you can connect the phone via wire or wireless to a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and have it replace a desktop pc so you're going to have to go here uh, in the display department where we can see the refresh rate, by the way, and do some digging. And then we got ready for, and this is what it's like. It lets you share the power of your phone with nearby displays and PCs. You can also turn your handset into a webcam for that PC. So that's pretty much it. And um, you can definitely apply features from here, webcam, mobile data sharing, and more. 
connect to a PC, use that QR code and it should be all done. That's the new Motorola flagship, the Motorola Edge 30 Pro. It looks pretty, but it's slightly slippery and has an odd placement of the buttons. Aside from that, it feels like a pretty powerful beast, at least if I'm watching the CPU results in benchmarks and the camera shows quite a bit of promise, at least, at least to reach the level of the Oppo and OnePlus flagships from last year, if not higher. That's it from gsn.com. We'll be back very soon with a full review. Goodbye.